Midweek Pictorial, April 1st, 1920. In towns of the New Republic of Czechoslovakia, the authorities are making haste to remove from public buildings all signs in the Hungarian language. Veteran Czechoslovak troops who have returned to Prague, the capital of their new republic, after valiant fighting in Siberia, where they formed the nucleus of allied anti-Bolshevist forces. Czech and Slovak girls in their picturesque national costumes gathered at the Wilson Railroad Station in Prague to greet the soldiers returning from the Siberian fighting front. The occasion was made a gala one, and the greater part of the population of the capital turned out to give a great ovation to the men who had shed luster on the national arms. Preparing the new harbor at Pressburg, which is destined to become one of the greatest commercial ports of southeastern Europe. It will be especially valuable in fostering trade with Yugoslavia. Pressburg is the center of a great wheat and wine growing district. The principal articles of commerce are silk, champagne, spirits, gloves, furniture, and musical instruments. The town is strongly fortified and has a population of nearly 100,000. Czechoslovak soldiers marching past the statue of Empress Marie Theresa in the principal square of Pressburg. The latter city, which formerly belonged to Hungary, will be the greatest Danubian port of the new Czechoslovak Republic, and has a future of great commercial promise. Wonderful view of some of New York's skyscrapers, as seen from a Navy dirigible that recently circled above the city. Most prominent of all is the Woolworth Building, the highest in the world, 750 feet, seen in the immediate foreground. At the lower left are shown the Post Office Building and City Hall Park. Beyond are the huge beehives of business, almost every one sheltering thousands of workers. Mighty office buildings which, from a height of 2,000 feet, look almost like toy blocks. This view covers New York's financial district, and these buildings house great institutions whose ramifications extend to all quarters of the globe. The streets between the buildings are like the bottoms of great canyons, and the inmates of a single building often equal the population of a city. Times Square and Longacre Square as seen from half a mile in the air. It is the heart of the city's hotel and theater district. At left is the Times Building, Broadway and 42nd Street. At right foreground is the New York Public Library, one of the most beautiful structures in America, 5th Avenue from 40th to 42nd Street. At left foreground is Bryant Park. The Broad Street is the famous 42nd Street thoroughfare. Blowing up bridges and railway tracks at Camp Humphreys near Washington. This forms part of the practice of an engineer corps stationed at that place, and embodies the lessons taught by the war. The photographer has caught the scene at the instant of the explosion. Part of the crew of the Norwegian bark Sinneg, which sprang a leak and sank March 7th when 850 miles east of the Virginia Capes. The vessel had left Norfolk, Virginia 10 days before, bound for Italy. When she became waterlogged, the crew took to the boats, of which one was commanded by the captain and the other by the mate. After drifting and battling ocean gales for 11 days, the captain's boat was sighted and the inmates rescued by the Varli. The other boat has not been heard from. It is said that at one time it was planned to kill the dog mascot here shown to supply food for the crew. With every spring, a vast amount of ice floats down the Hudson to the ocean. This year, the flows have been larger and more numerous than usual, owing to the severity of the past winter. Much damage has been done to buildings and wharves along the riverfront. The shattered pier of the Knickerbocker Canoe Club is here shown. A phase of the struggle against high rents is illustrated by this houseboat, on which families have taken refuge because they were unable to pay excessive rents. This is only one of many similar houseboats lined up along the shore of the Chicago River. While they leave much to be desired in the way of sanitation and comfort, they are at least temporary shelters pending the return of the housing problem to normal conditions. In Chicago, the rents have increased in some cases 50 to 150 percent. Japan, although one of the latest to enter the family of modern nations, is by no means content simply to imitate the ways of other peoples. She seeks to improve upon them, and in some cases takes the initiative. One instance of this is shown in the splash vendors with which automobiles are equipped to prevent the mud from the wheels being spattered upon pedestrians. The light brush does not retard the speed of the car, but it catches the greater part of the mud and water. 
Georges Carpentier, the French boxer, and his bride, photographed on their arrival in New York. The Frenchman, who in a few seconds knocked out Beckett, the English fighter, is of a much higher type than most champions of the ring. He enjoys popular approbation because of the part he played for his country during the war. A match with Dempsey, the American champion, is contemplated, but has not yet been arranged. The knockout blow with which Carpentier blighted the aspirations of Beckett, the English boxer. Possibly the most unique restaurant in New York is the one pictured here, located on East 34th Street. It was formerly a stable that once housed noted racers. The stalls that once held Hermes, Irish Lad, and Gold Heels have been thoroughly renovated and hold tables for dinners. White rubber coats have been served out to the police of Montreal. Apart from their value as protection from rain, they help to mark out the location of the men on a dark night. Lady Patricia Ramsay, better known as Princess Pat, and her firstborn son, now three months old. She was married to Captain Ramsay February 27, 1919, and was the first royal lady for many years to renounce her rank to marry a commoner. Touring car used as a traveling home, one of many that can now be seen on German roads. The absence of adequate hotel accommodation and the wretched condition of the German railway service have made these cars popular with businessmen. They have hot and cold water, all necessities, and many luxuries. Speed kings of sea and air are here shown racing over the same course at Miami, Florida. The boat is the Gar Jr., which won the 20-mile race for express cruisers, setting a world record. The seaplane is the Aero Limited No. 4, winning a race from E.B. Thomas's triplane. The gyrocopter, the new Berliner machine that, when tilted forward, will fly horizontally. The lifting propellers are 13 feet in diameter. The system applied to an airplane enables it to ascend or descend almost vertically. ODA Aeroplane Engine Starter Many fatal accidents occurred during the war to mechanics while swinging the propellers of planes. This mechanical starter, worked by a cylinder of carbonic acid gas, obviates such dangers. This engine starter, invented by B.C. Hux, is a V-shaped tripod attached to a Ford car. The car can be run up to the aeroplane to be started, and the flange on the starting device attached to the boss of the propeller. The engine is thrown into gear, the propeller is pulled over, and the motor commences to fire. President Wilson before and after his recent illness. Photographs taken of the president while on an automobile ride in Washington, March 21st. Comparison of these pictures, taken at various angles, with the one taken before he was stricken, shows the ravages wrought by illness. The cop coup d'etat was short-lived, but it left in its wake a train of serious disorders. Outbreaks have occurred in various parts of Germany, accompanied by great loss of life and damage to property. They have been most severe in the Ruhr district, where some of the greatest German industrial plants are located. The Spartacans, who are reported to be in great force, are said to be officered by leaders of the old regime and to be amply supplied with artillery. They have won in the initial fighting, and German government troops have been called out to suppress them. This move developed a peculiar situation, as by the terms of the treaty, German troops are not permitted in that region. German officers have appealed to the Allied military authorities to permit them to operate until the disorders are repressed, when they promise to withdraw. France looks askance at the proposal, while England is reported as favoring it. Photo Caption Great Leipzig Fair in full swing. This year, it has been virtually destroyed by Spartacan attacks, attended with many fatalities. American visitors were rescued by special train. Map of the Ruhr Industrial District, where Spartacan attacks have required intervention of German government troops. Members of Company B, Texas Rangers, crossing the Rio Grande to call upon Mexican fiscales, or border police, with whom they are now working in harmony to prevent liquor smuggling. Captain Stevens of the Texas Rangers and one of his men, entering a Mexican dwelling where it is suspected that plans are being hatched for smuggling liquor over the Rio Grande from Mexico to the United States. Since the passage of the Prohibition Law in this country, a vast amount of illicit traffic in liquor has been going on at the Mexican border. The line is guarded by Texas Rangers for the United States and by the Fiscales on the Mexican side. Formerly, there was little love lost between the two forces, but now they are working well together. 
leaders of the Texas Rangers and Mexican Fiscales conferring on the best plans to be adopted in preventing liquor from being smuggled over the Rio Grande into United States territory. Frederick McManis, the noted American sculptor, at work on the Statue of Liberty which it is proposed to give to France as the offering of the people of America. The statue is of heroic size, and its site will be at Meaux, France, the furthest point of the German advance in 1914. The statue represents Liberty battling against her enemies. Mr. McMoneys thus describes his conception. It will be as though the figure of Liberty had been desecrated and attacked, as though the enemies of civilization had tried to drag her down where she stands, even in her agony, still resisting. Liberty protesting against invasion, Liberty triumphant at last. House of David Band, doing their part in the raising of funds for the McMoney statue. Memorial exercises at Lafayette statue in Union Square, New York, opening campaign for America's gift to France. An automobile with gigantic pennies for its sides at Times Square, New York, in the Liberty statue drive. The USS Battleship Maryland, America's newest, largest, and most powerful super dreadnought, was launched March 20th at the plant of the Newport News Shipbuilding and Dry Dock Company. The sponsor of the giant fighting craft was Mrs. E. Brooke Lee, wife of the Controller General of Maryland. The boilers are fitted for burning fuel oil exclusively. The main propelling machinery, which is electric, as in the case of all the capital ships now under construction for the U.S. Navy, consists of two main generators driving four propelling motors. The main generators are of the turbine type. The Maryland, together with its sister ships, will be equipped with a high-power radio installation. The Maryland is the first battleship to carry 16-inch guns. The USS Tennessee, which will shortly be placed in commission, is practically the same size, but carries 12 14-inch guns instead of the 8 16-inch guns which will be mounted by the Maryland. 190 of these powerful guns are to be manufactured, and their combined energy will be approximately 21,250,000 pounds. The projectile for these guns weighs 2,100 pounds, and the entire number will be capable of firing nearly 200 tons of projectiles at a time. To produce this result, 125,000 pounds of powder would be burned in about 1 20th of a second. A single discharge of these combined batteries, it is estimated, would produce energy equal to that required to lift a battleship to the height of the Washington Monument. The overall length of the Maryland is 600 feet, and the beam is 97 feet. While the Tennessee has 28,500 HP, the Maryland will have 28,900 HP, and is expected to develop a speed of 21 knots. She will be electrically driven. Her crew will consist of 52 officers and 1,350 enlisted men. Photo Caption Drawing of the Maryland as she will look when finished and ready for service. The prominence of her powerful armament is heightened by contrast with the unusually small superstructure. An airman's view of the Maryland immediately after the launching, giving a graphic idea of the amount of work that remains to be done before the sea fighter is completed. The Maryland on the ways at Newport News, Virginia, sliding down the greased incline to the water in a launching that was devoid of any untoward features. The great ship made a majestic picture. One of the propeller motors as installed in the Maryland. Control levers and instruments, portside propulsion control equipment of the Maryland. It is the same system as used on the California, which was recently launched. The moment at which the bottle of champagne broke against the bows. Mrs. E. Brooke Lee, wife of the state controller, was the sponsor. How one of the big propeller motors will look when installed in the Maryland. Electricity is used as the driving power and in the operation of all the equipment of the ship. Latest American submarine of the S-Type being moved across the yards at Quincy, Massachusetts, preparatory to launching. A special cradle and ways were prepared for the great underwater boat. She was carried 200 feet in 10 minutes. Bow view of the submarine as she was going down the ways. The ship is said to be the most powerful ever built, far outdistancing anything of its type carrying a foreign flag.